One of the things you can do to observe your own behavior is you know, flip open your MacBook or flip open your computer, um, put tape over the red little dot that shows that you're recording it, and record yourself. And I want you to do things. I want you to you know, watch a really funny movie or watch a really funny clip. I want you to watch or read something. I want you to just interact for 30 minutes and then slowly look through how you look. Because right? it's very interesting is you may not know what you look like. So when somebody else tells you something and you start laughing, you don't know what your laugh looks like. You don't, you're not essentially sure. So one of the good ways to do it is, is observe yourself via a video camera. And it, it's, it's very interesting. It's like, it's like if you want to know how to nail your best smile, right? So smiling is essentially is vital in communication. It's, it's very, very important. I constantly work with people and help them improve their smiles. But one of the most useful things you can do is just watch something really, really, really funny and laugh and get that genuine, perfect smile. That's the smile you want to nail. So you can just watch something funny, record yourself, and then you can work on mimicking or mocking that smile. Very, very, very useful. Another useful tip is to ask your friends. So your friends are wonderful resources, wonderful, you know, reservoirs of information about you, essentially. You know, like you could ask them, like, how do you think I feel right now? And they're like, oh, well, you look a little upset. And you're like, uh, I'm not upset at all. I feel great. That's a problem. That's really, really a big problem. There's, there's this concept called incongruence in, in, in communication, and most people are incongruent in their communication, right? So there needs to be congruency. So if I tell somebody I love them, I can be like, I love you. That doesn't, that's incongruent. The content says one thing, but my body language says nothing. If I look somebody dead in the eyes, hold their face and look and hold their gaze and be like, I love you. It's a little bit better, a little bit better, a little better. But even me, I have a hard time even faking that gesture because I don't mean it. So our communication needs to be congruent. And a, a, a big problem is a lot of people go out in the world and their communication's not congruent. So they, they're on a date and they really like the person across from them. But the person doesn't realize that because they come off as so cold or aloof. Or they're, you know, they they want to tell their a manager wants to tell one of their employees that they're really proud of them. So they say, "No, you did a great job. I'm really proud of you." That's not a congruent behavior. So there's a lot of miscommunication in this congruency. So it's very, very important that you have congruent behavior. It needs to have your nonverbals and the content of your conversation both need to be aligned. It makes your communication way more effective.